Disney Star Wars fans were a bit upset. They've hit the second tower. <laughs> My reaction to the Acolyte getting cancelled, though, entirely different. <laughs> and how could it not be, when the cancellation led to titles such as Disney Plus Force Chokes the Acolyte to Death. Go force yourself. Surprisingly brutal headline, and honestly, my favourite article headline since Rings of Power, the new hobbits are filthy hungry simpletons with stage Irish accents. That's one billion dollars well spent. The fallout was always going to be wild. Some people were happy, and other people, not so much. Disney is happy to let the toxic dude bros win, I guess. It is interesting that Rachel Leishman is the same person that gave the famous interview with Leslie Headland. With identical twins, it was very difficult to tell them apart. And would no doubt join Alyssa McConte in being part of the modern Disney Star Wars audience. Childless cat lady? Blame modern TV for Star Wars The Acolyte's cancellation. Or you could blame it on the creator and the writers, the people involved. No, it's just television's fault. Happens to every TV show nowadays. But the modern Disney Star Wars fans... Ask me what I'm about to do. I'm about to cry. Thank you for asking. They weren't going to let The Acolyte walk off into the snow talking about how they may be gone for some time. These are people of intelligence, hard work, loyalty. To receive this news, I'm... I like him. <laughs> That's why they started a petition to save the Acolyte, yes. And it already has hundreds, literally hundreds of signatures. Within 24 hours, they managed to get 700 signatures, which at $180 million budget means if they all chipped in $257,000, they could pay for a season two, which is a bargain if I do say so myself. My favorite bit is where it goes, the Acolyte garnered a following for its diverse cast. Yes, it did. A following of 700 people. I am mourning the fact that we're not getting any more Kimir edits because we're not gonna get any more source material. Probably. Now, to be fair, after that article was written, the signatures did increase, and there's now 7,000 signatures rather than 700, which means they only need to contribute $25,000 each in order to get a season two, which is far more reasonable for them all to chip in. I think you'll agree. Unfortunately, the success of this show has made you a target. The success... Personally, I look forward to their donations about the series they care ever so much about. But despite the 7,000 signatures, it's not looking good for the Acolyte. Disney has removed all of their merchandise from the Disney store. This led even Kotaku, massive fans of the series. I can't work out why. That was the thing that I was very concerned about getting out was, you know, what Manny looked like once you saw him. He steps forward with the sunlight accentuating his taut muscles. To worry that Disney might actually make the Acolyte disappear entirely from Disney Plus. And I wouldn't be surprised if they did. I mean, they seem to delete everything that I like. It's giving flashbacks to when Disney Plus removed the Willow TV series. Cheers for triggering my PTSD. D. Willow. 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 Willow's back. Willow is getting deleted from Disney Plus. This is why we can't have nice things, because Disney keep deleting all the funniest series. Ask me what I'm about to do. I'm about to cry. Yeah, there are times where you're sitting there, you're feeling a bit down, a bit miserable, and you just need something to cheer you up. So you watch The Acolyte, and you're like, well, it could be worse. I could be a complete retard. Oh, Always brings a smile to your face. You're gonna be a great night. <laughs> I admit I'm disappointed. The cameraman wasn't there, was he? But it has been a funny few days on the internet since the cancellation. Obviously, just the very idea that the toxic dude bros, they might win, has triggered a lot of people on the internet. It's like they're going through the five stages of grief. Those being denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and finally, acceptance. Well, I think we've already covered denial with the petition to save the acolyte, and anger with, you're letting the toxic dude bros win. Originally, this article was just called, is the acolyte cancelled? But then they couldn't just resist being toxic. They never gave the series a chance. These men made it impossible for anyone to talk about the series. I mean, there's just so many men out there talking about Star Wars, no one else can get a word in edgewise. Now you would think that just means you make a product for the men, because there's so many of them that like Star Wars. No, we're not, we haven't quite reached that logical conclusion yet, have we, dear? This is a win for those toxic people. Every single thing these toxic bros like, it gets into the season. This is how you know she's talking about the audience, because everything the audience likes gets a second season because they actually watched it. There was enough of them to make it popular, and that's why, if they like the show, they're rewarded. So what about the rest of us? Should we stop caring about Star Wars because they're going to cancel something we like? We 
because I'm angry, man, with the camera set up Sunday shorts. I love the idea that Bob Iger is sitting there in his office just watching YouTube videos going, hey, hey Steve, Steve, yeah, Bob. Bob says we've got to cancel it, bro. I know it was it was massively successful. Yeah, made us millions, but Bob doesn't like it. There we go. It's difficult being a thing because I've stuck around because I love the franchise. I just wish this franchise loved its actual fans. They made the show you wanted. Nobody watched it. It got cancelled. As much as I'd love to go, you underestimate my power. No, this was a universal decision by millions of people that your show was crap. These angry men are never going to like what the franchise does unless they're the ones calling the shots. And it's like, yes, the audience isn't going to like the show unless it does what the audience wants. Congratulations, you hit on the fundamental idea of making a product for people. This really is peak 2024 where it's just California rediscovering things that we've known for thousands of years. And of course, just to add to the anger train, we also had more articles from them. Disney should be ashamed for further fueling the trolling of the acolyte cast and crew. Disney should be ashamed because the cast and crew were trolling the audience. I said white people cry, what's the call? A source involved in the cancellation even admitted that hurt perception of the show which would have affected the cancellation. And no number of fake experts saying that cancelling Star Wars The Acolyte sets a dangerous precedent and is bad news for the future of Star Wars and Hollywood. Cancelling The Acolyte is dangerous, says expert. And by expert, they mean teaching professor at a university. In other words, just a guy that watches movies. He has all the expertise of anybody else which has gone to a cinema. Dangerous. <laughs> Is the cancellation in the room with you now? And then they moved on to bargaining. Actually, it's not the fact that the Acolyte was awful why it got cancelled. It's just that the entire model is broken. All of streaming is broken and we can fix it. In fact, it needs to be fixed. In 2023 alone, they cancelled over 50 TV shows with 20 of them being cancelled after just one season. But the thing is, over a quarter of viewers wait until the finale before they watch the series and they don't watch if there's an unresolved ending. Yes, that's what they're gonna go for. For. Obviously, no one's gonna watch a series with just one season. They're gonna wait for it to get a season two before they watch the first one. If only you make season two, we promise you, season one will be successful. And what evidence do they want you to bet $180 million on? Again, it's just a survey, isn't it really? People won't watch a show if they fear it's going to be cancelled after one season. Not reviewing The Acolyte doesn't just harm The Acolyte, it actually harms everything on Disney+. Plus. You have to give The Acolyte a season two, otherwise they won't watch anything else you put out. I'm not saying every show should stick around for more than one season, but come on, give these shows at least a second season or make it so they don't have a cliffhanger at the season one finale. Just do something, please, I'm begging you. Everything gets cancelled, nothing gets to find its feet. Companies wonder why no one's watching, but no one's watching because it's inevitably going to be unfinished. Why would I watch the first one until you've already finished the second? That's what I want to know. Now, we do have a problem with the next one, depression, because the average Disney Star Wars fan is depressed anyway. Child this cat lady. So without some kind of baseline, it's difficult to tell whether the Acolyte cancellation made them worse or they were just always insane. What Lucasfilm is doing with this decision is allowing the bigots to win. But moving on to acceptance, well, we definitely had that on Twitter. Bunch of babies couldn't handle it and now we'll be stuck with more of the same forever. Now the Acolyte has got cancelled, we'll just have good television forever. It seems pretty accepting to me. <laughs> but I think the most surprising thing about all of it is just just how many things you had like this? Star Wars The Acolyte deserved better. <laughs> I'm sorry. If there's so many articles coming out supporting The Acolyte, how come you never watched it? You can come out all the time talking about how you prefer the most female-fronted diverse productions ever in Star Wars. But if that's a good thing, more people would have watched it. Give the audience what they want. I know your morality isn't that people are good because of their deeds, they're good because of who they are, but for normal people, that's not enough. In fact, it doesn't actually impact the quality of anything. This has made The Acolyte's demise all the more heartbreaking. The show even made headlines prior to its debut for staffing a writer who's never seen Star Wars. Yes, they're actually writing that as a positive in order to ensure that the series was still impactful without an encyclopedic knowledge of franchise lore. In fact, I think The Acolyte was made so that you didn't need knowledge. There are coma patients that could have kept up with the plot of The Acolyte. Your personal mileage may have varied, but it's undeniable that the series offered a lot, a much needed dose of romantic and sexual tension. Much needed dose. As he begins to untie a belted knot from around his waist, she straightens up for a better look. Why can't the girls have fun things for the girlies? Why? Every time you find the audience of the Acolyte, you get the same thing. Cat lady! 
Alongside big brain takes like the Acolyte getting cancelled is stupid. Look at that big mouse and all his money. Too scared to try new things. Look at him go. It's like, no, he did try a new thing. It looked at Mandela Stenberger where I'm gonna pay you a lot of money to be in this TV series. And she gave him this. I said, white people cry. What's the call? Because I am black and gay and a woman. Danish. There are aspects of identity that have been traditionally, historically persecuted. Whoever tell, convinced everybody else in their story controls power. They definitely tried something new, it's just that nobody wanted it. There just aren't enough Star Wars fans interested in finding out how big manager Kinto is. Feels good, doesn't it? To hold one in your hand again for it to be financially viable. It's not the most terribly surprising news because we live in a capitalist hellscape. Yes, that's right. A website called The Dork Side, dedicated to Star Wars, talking about a frivolous entertainment series whose only main draw would have been Manager Kinto's abs, which exists as a piece of entertainment to provide literally nothing except frivolous entertainment at best, is complaining about a capitalist hellscape. The Acolyte wouldn't exist under any other system, just so you're aware. And believe me, I don't I don't enjoy saying that because I don't want to make them sound good. <laughs> Maybe the comms have some good points. <laughs> If it means it won't get the Acolyte, well, maybe I'll consider it. Rip Willow, I literally never got the chance to watch you. Dude, it was showing for two months, and it was on the service for an extra month. I didn't have a single second in three months to watch Willow. I can hear an ex just crying out to be pressed in the distance. Perhaps the most optimistic person in the world would be Brad Whipple, who says we need a physical release of the Acolyte. The High Republic fans are understandably upset, yes, all ten of them. And I say this as a white- well, I'm I mean, depression. Uh. Throbbing. Cat lady. What are you doing? What do you mean? <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? No, it wasn't a perfect show, but a show has to be House of the Dragons or something to stay on. Yes, a show has to be good to be monetarily worthwhile to stay on a street. Yes, companies don't like spending money on crap. I know they're in California, but there comes a time where even they have to develop some taste. Half the fandom is either toxic or hates everything. The other half actually enjoys the stuff and is slowly being trained not to get invested or care because it's just gonna get cancelled anyway. I tell you what, if half the fandom of Star Wars watched The Acolyte, it would have been a massive hit. What your problem there is, is you're greatly overestimating how many people are like you. The Acolyte was a bold new vision for Star Wars. Now it's gone. I just love the very idea that this was bold and stunning and never done before. It's like, what, you just stuck a chick in it and made her thirsty? This isn't bold, new or original. In fact, it's been civilization's ultimate conclusion that for the last 100 50 huh? We were always heading down this roll. To a cat lady? And you know that you have absolutely nothing to talk about in the show where you just have to oh, it's representative Star Wars. Look, I'm in it. So yeah, but do you think you're worth $180 million? If not, you probably shouldn't be in it. Like Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise probably worth $180 million. Some random bin singing a song about the majority of the audience. Down the witches, down the not worth $180 million. This isn't complicated maths. That's somebody that shouldn't be represented. One of the boldest Star Wars experiments. I don't know where this idea comes from. This was bold, new, and original. It was so bold. Look how bold it was. And I mean, look, I love hyperbole and emotive language because it's just the art of storytelling. It makes things more entertaining. The storytelling has more of an impact with a bit of flowery enhancement. But even I have my limits when you get titles like The Acolyte's Cancellation proves television is in peril. Well, if you cancelled the Acolyte, we just can't have television anymore. No, it's gone. That's it. Better pack up Hollywood. It's the Acolyte or nothing. No television series is safe, unless it's popular. <laughs> it's not enough to create a show of the highest possible quality, boasting a talented cast, a gripping story, with the potential to span several series and a passionate fan base. I mean, the Acolyte didn't have any of those. It was low quality, with a cast that had exactly one expression, bottom of the barrel story, and the plot couldn't span eight episodes, let alone several series. As for the fan base, that's Star Wars, not the Acolyte. The Acolyte would have to build its own fan base. But it's been cancelled despite proving itself as Star Wars' most exciting project in year- Where does that link to? So, because somebody spun a lightsaber around, that was it proving itself to be the most exciting project in Star Wars. Right. My favourite thing in these articles is how everyone's talking about Willow. No one gave a crap about Willow before. You cancelled the Acolyte, and suddenly Warwick Davis is one of the most famous people online. Where was this anger when Willow got cancelled? Where was this anger when I needed you? Sat down with Warwick and told him that Alora Dannon would finally be in this story. And his response immediately was, 
Why? You never cared about Willow then. Now you're just trying to use Warwick Davis in your own agenda. You should be ashamed of yourselves. The tantalizing chemistry between the two leads and the fact the fans were basically salivating over the steamy scenes didn't seem to matter the bigwigs who decided whether or not they'd invest in new episodes. That's all this show has. This is the only audience they've got. Oh my, we're salivating over some guy who got his kit off. <laughs> That's a tidy fraction of the Star Wars audience. Flip that around, maybe you could have actually appealed to the demographic of Star Wars. Basic business there. You can have that advice for free, Disney. You just have to browse TikTok videos. If you're going on TikTok to find Star Wars fans, you're going to find that very tiny demographic and then just assume that all Star Wars fans are like that. The reason why Madam Web advertised on TikTok is because they wanted a female demographic. It's not the demographic of Star Wars. Stop going on TikTok to try and find your audience. It's not where your audience is. It appears is that in many cases, an immediate stream of money will be prioritized over creativity and passion. Have you just discovered how business works? I can't believe that Disney isn't willing to go bankrupt to fund the acolytes. These are truly sad times indeed. What, would, what did you think Hollywood was? It's a business. If you want products, those products need to make money. This is how products work. There comes a time where you realize, oh, this is what it takes to be a fan of the acolytes. It might genuinely be that to like the Acolyte, you have to be born yesterday. These fickle cancellations are a never-ending punch to the gut. Seemingly callous decision-making is leaving audiences devastated. We can only hope that this will be disrupted in the future. At this stage, we're just trying our best not to get too invested. I think we had denial, depression, and acceptance all at the same time. <laughs> and probably peak acceptance is the Acolyte getting cancelled is another win for toxic fans. Because you said fans. Star Wars fans. Wait, what is this? A bold new entry. There is times when you get words like that repeated across multiple articles. You're like, hang on. There's no way this is a coincidence. It's bold. 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 It's what I think when I see the acolyte. I'm like, bold. The decision not to renew it makes it the first cancellation of a powerhouse property on Disney Plus. Powerhouse. It's a massive IP, the acolyte. Then they bring up the THR source and goes, hopefully whoever slung that at her is already out the door because there is no reason to muddy the water with that nonsense. Why would you even do have you considered that it's true? That might be why they said it. Thinking, oh my goodness, you know, here's a little brown girl mm -hmm. who is in sci-fi and fantasy. I dropped a diss track. I said, what? People cry. What? Horrific, violent, racist language. It's unacceptable. That actively going out and targeting the fans, your target demographic, the Star Wars audience, may not be the best thing to get them to watch it. They shouldn't fire that person. You promote them because at least they realized reality. That said, because I follow entertainment news, I know the numbers for the Acolyte weren't there. So you know that this person is correct and the numbers weren't there. And you're like, I don't know why they canceled it. However, there is an argument that Disney could strengthen Star Wars by continuing the Acolyte story and giving it a longer runway. You can strengthen the Star Wars brand by just making more of stuff that nobody wants. That won't damage the brand. Oh, the logic, bro. The logic. Manny Jacinto Stranger is easily the most compelling character this franchise has ever seen. Manny Jacinto is the most compelling character of Star Wars. I wonder why. Why can't the childless cat lady have fun things for the cat lady? Why? They think now they're going to make Star Wars shows for the real fans. Men. But the reality is they'll simply make fewer Star Wars shows. I agree. Disney hates their audience so much they will never make anything for it, even though they should. So they'll just fail less often because they have less money because they refuse to make Star Wars shows for the real fans. The Acolyte didn't deserve another season, but Star Wars needs one anyway. <laughs> I mean, look, it was crap, but you should still double down. <laughs> For years, Star Wars fans have depicted Kathleen Kennedy as a malevolent figure hell-bent on destroying their childhoods. And I think that's unfair. Malevolent would imply that she's doing it deliberately. <laughs> I don't think she has the intelligence for that. I think it's literally, I want to make Star Wars for women. And it's like, but they don't watch Star Wars, love. I think we've already proven that if you can capture the ever-growing demographic, Cat lady! Then they would have absolutely loved the Acolyte. I don't even believe that the Acolyte couldn't have an audience. It's just that the audience doesn't care about 
Star Wars. If you take the Acolyte and set it as a period piece, it'll probably be popular. I mean, they are really easily pleased. Just look at Bridgerton. But that is basically what you had with the Acolyte. Is it people reaching, oh, Darth Plagueis could have saved it. Or just pure delusion. The Acolyte was critically acclaimed and beloved by fans. Objectively not true. Disney really said F you to non-traditional Star Wars fans. Do you want to know what the name is for traditional Star Wars fans? Called the audience. They really said F you for people that don't care about Star Wars. That actually might be the best business strategy they could employ right now, to be honest. We are fighting tooth and nail to simply exist in the Star Wars fan base. All you have to do to exist in a fan base is just watch the stuff. It's actually not that complicated. It's more when you want to be in the fan base and then be praised for existing and have the fan base cater specifically to you that you're probably going to find issues. The people who, who really should be seeing themselves because they're the ones who make your show profitable is the audience. The ones that already exist. And you already know who those people are. Amandler even knows who those people are. That's why she made a diss track about them. And I guess imposter syndrome really eats at you. When you know that actually you shouldn't be here and this show shouldn't exist and that really we should have just made a show for Star Wars fans. But those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future and I will see you in the next one. Oh, bye-bye.